Seattle, Washington. The skyline you see today is a picture of a young city. The history of Seattle is a brief one, beginning in 1852, almost two and one half centuries after the Pilgrims came to America. When you look at Seattle's skyline in the coming century, the city by Elliott Bay will still be young as major cities determine their age. Seattle has had many nicknames. Someone once wrote in stone, Seattle, portal of the North Pacific. Seattle was once called the hydroplane capital of the world. Jet City, Queen City, City of Seven Hills. Seattle is a city which every now and then thrusts ever higher toward the sky. It is a city of spirit, one determined to grow. But there was a time when a building called the Smith Tower was the outstanding landmark in her skyline. And there was a time when there was hardly any skyline at all. In 1879, the city covered an area from Lake Union on the north to Beacon Hill on the south. This relief map was taken from an old government survey. It shows the hills and gullies of old Seattle. The town site of Seattle was filed with the government land office on May 23, 1853, the legal birthday of Seattle. On the south, at the location of the Stetson Post Mill, is the present location of the King County Dome Stadium. All of this area to the south was once water and tide flats. The Great Fire in 1889 disrupted all city improvements. The blaze started at First Avenue and Madison Street when a boiling glue pot in a cabinet shop overturned. The fire spread rapidly and was never really brought under control. It burned itself out in the tide flats to the south. Within seven hours, over 30 blocks of the business district were in ruins. The waterfront and everything south of University Street was completely burned. Wharves, banks, hotels, and business establishments were in ruins. First Avenue and Madison Street, and on down First Avenue to Columbia, to Cherry, the Boston Block on Second Avenue, the Northwest Cracker Factory at First and University. The King Street area was gone, and Yester's Mill and Wharf. It was not the fire that made history, but rather Seattle's reaction to it. In less than a week, the people had recovered from the shock and were laboring with renewed enthusiasm. The rapidity with which the city rebuilt itself sent Seattle's fame throughout the nation. Nothing like it had ever been witnessed on the American continent with the single exception of the Chicago fire in 1871. Within four years, over 130 new buildings had been built of brick, stone, and steel. Some buildings ranged up to eight stories high. One outstanding civic project in Seattle's history was the Alaska-Yukon Pacific Exposition. In 1906, Seattle businessmen incorporated to finance and promote the fair. And in June of the next year, 20,000 people turned out for the groundbreaking ceremonies on the new campus of the University of Washington. Two years later, on June 1st, 1909, the fair was officially opened. Opening day was declared a legal holiday, and there was a spectacular military parade down 2nd Avenue. Out at the fairgrounds, David Wagoner's concert band picked up the momentum. And James J. Hill, the empire builder, who as president of the Great Northern Railroad had built the line west to Seattle only 16 years earlier, 
gave the opening address. The main entrance to the fair was located at what is now the main entrance to the University of Washington campus. The Court of Honor and Federal buildings overlooked Geyser Basin. From here, one could look south over a beautiful waterfall called the Cascades toward a full view of Mount Rainier. The Court of Honor was the focal point of the exposition, and here spectators paraded in their best Sunday attire. Directly east of the Court of Honor was Gnome Circle and the Forestry Building, with its spectacular columns of Douglas fir from Snohomish County. There were documentary displays of American history, and twice a day, a simulated Battle of Gettysburg from America's Civil War was staged. The Midway was called the Pay Streak, and on opening day, over 80,000 people were there. It was a virtual Disneyland of fun and excitement. There was Prince Albert, the educated horse. There were pony rides for the kiddies. There was a rodeo and Dixieland jazz. And there was a thrill ride called the Tickler. Twenty-five countries sent exhibits to the fair. From all over the world came statuary and paintings. The exposition demonstrated that this was the age of electricity. Electric lights of many colors trimmed all the buildings. On that final day in October, all the lights of the exposition were darkened. The remaining crowd sang all Lang Syne under the starry sky, then left quietly in the darkness. It is difficult to be conservative about Seattle's future because we have so much going for us. Everything about Seattle, its people, its scenery, its history, its spirit have been notable. This is Seattle, picture of a young city.